Our next panel is called Blood on the Open Source. Um, we will be hearing from Pierre-Marie Heller, who is a board advisor of Blodon. Pierre's claim to fame is disrupting the complex and problematic blood and tissue donating processes through blockchain by motivating donors and minimalizing waste. Please welcome Pierre to the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Okay, that's great. I'm very honored and grateful to be able to present here a project with a topic that concerns us all, blood. So I will start with two easy questions, a yes or no questions. If it's yes, please raise your arm. Did you ever receive blood in a hospital in your lifetime? Did you ever give blood in your lifetime? That's very nice. Usually it's the other way around. People need more blood than there is demand. So we are here to talk about blood, yes, but also blockchain. So blood and blockchain makes blockchain. We call the project blockchain to make clear about what it is. I will have now 50 minutes, more or less, and in those 50 minutes I will present you is 901 people will need blood, desperately. Of those 901 people, 202 are pregnant women giving birth. 684 are the elderly. So usually the blood goes like this. People over 65 take 70% of the blood which is stored. People up to 30 years take only 10% of the blood. But those should give blood for the elderly. This is a kind of mismatch we have. So why did we start with this blockchain project? Where are the challenges today about blood donation and very soon? Yeah? There will be a clear decrease in availability. We have much more older people than young people. So this will be very soon a big problem. This mismatch is clear and here also depending on certain blood groups being more rare than others. We have a low conversion if we try to motivate people to donate blood. The classical programs don't really work well. To store blood costs a lot. And what makes it even worse is that this blood, after 40 day, two days, you can throw it away. It's obsolete. So people who are giving blood think, I will help people, but in the end, they don't. It's wasted or used for something else. So how do you want to change those things? Again, we will have a, want an, an effective motivation of the donors so that more people give blood. We want to balance and match supply and demand. We want to have promotions that work well and not do it for nothing. This is also a cost effective thing. No or at least less storage costs because there will be no need to store the blood that long. And the storage day less 25 days, you didn't see that. So we are on a blockchain event, why use blockchain for that? Why is it necessary or what, why does it make really sense in this case? It's open as we know, open network, everybody can join it. Everybody who wants to donate can say yes, I'm in for it. It's transparent, you know where is the demand of the blood, to whom can I give the blood, so you feel in a good sense, doing something nice. Nobody owns this network. And we will see this is something not all people like about this. Immutability, we talked a lot about it today. This is very important. Imagine you, you need blood of a very special type, a very rare type. You want to make sure that this blood is really this type. 
and not something which makes you sicker uh, than gives you more health. Anonymous. Of course, you, with health data, you always need a lot of levels of anonymity. I will not talk about the details of technology here, just to say that this is clear, it will be anonymized. And last but not least, it's also about tokens, about rewards. I will come to those points also later more in deep, but I think today, and I heard it all around, rewards and loyalty programs concerning health is something big which comes now. What do you have today? 25.5 million donors in the US and, and Europe. We have 89 million diabetics at the same place, which are potential donors. But we would have 9 million potential donors, really, which are not donating for what reason ever. And I can tell you, we will need those soon, at least not the 9 billions, but much, much more than we have now. The population gets older every 50 years, the population ages all the time. And this is something we have to take into consideration. So again, what do we do about the decrease of blood availability? The motivation programs are something which should be used here. You can give discounts on products. You can tell them you can have a free diagnosis if you donate. You can even have diet and exercise programs doing it. The supply mismatch. You need algorithms to make something here. So what did we learn today? We need big data to have AI algorithms. So how do we get this big data? We need a lot of donors giving us their very private data, but in an anonymous way, so that we can have those algorithms in the end. The effect, as I told before, is only around 20% where you have in the classical um, campaigns. Blockchain can theoretically have 100% because you only get a reward, a token, if you either donate blood or share information about your blood. The storage costs. I mean, the blood will be stored in the network itself. Imagine, I mean, everybody knows Uber. Eh? You see the cars, they are driving around in the app. Imagine that you see people who, with your blood, a special rare blood or blood type, are they near somewhere? Can, I, can they help me? Because you know they are willing to help you. You don't have to search for it. Or hospitals doing the same. Be in the network, you see the network. And this makes it so efficient. Because this is one of the worst things, this shelf life which really goes obsolete after 42, some say 41 days, that's why I changed it here. And even, even worse, after 21 days already the blood gets less and less um, usable. See, now we already had 499 people demanding blood in this time where I spoke. So, it's about saving lives, it's about the future, having enough blood to converse, but is it really enough? Blockchain wants to ensure the delivery of more blood, but we need more data, we need people to act, interact with the health data. We heard today, who owns the data? The people own the data. Finally, it will be always the people. This is the common ground we have, so how do we motivate people to give us this data by themselves. Not only donate blood, but also um, you can imagine that you do a partnership with a health insurance company and they send me a push and say um, if you do your swimming, if you do uh, a diet, if it's a good one, uh, we reward your tokens. It makes you healthier 
good for us, but we reward you for this. You can give them any discounts or benefit if you're in the healthcare program. We, we, we want to make like a healthcare uh, loyalty database out of it. A big network, a whole ecosystem with rewards so that people are really motivated to do that. Because this is what we need. We need this data. We need to be able to analyze it. And we call this period network, which is on top of this blockchain to get more out of it. We start with something people can understand. Blood donation, they know this is something good. I'm willing to do it if I get something. Yeah. Because let's be honest, if you only receive a handshake or a sausage and bread, like in Switzerland, we receive that. Nobody really goes. They say, oh yes, but they forget about it. They, this is not what, what is needed. Yeah. So we had 760 people now needing blood. Just to see what kind of partners we at the moment have for technology. Trifinity, Bloodon is the mother company. Pharma partners, Adamed is the third biggest in Poland. Silver Media is the second biggest telemedicine platform also in Poland. Bioinfobank is a private um, foundation. For blockchain technology we have CoinFirm of Poland, the biggest blockchain success so far there. As is it a Swiss and Polish um, project, we have the Swiss-Polish Blockchain Association uh, helping there and for legal advice we have Lexalos. The whole project was accelerated by MIT last year. We went through all the stages, they validated the whole project. So this was a very success, a big success. We are now ready soon to go with the prototype. Here again uh, some technologies we plan to, to implement. People know about Oracle, Pacific, Hyperledge. Ethereum is one of the possibility. I will skip on this. People, you, you know about this technology. Shortly about the team, you see, it's like five Polish people, and me from Switzerland. And I think it was Osama asking, uh, where are the good people? Where, where can you find people? Poland. Yes, Poland. Really, really good. They have. Uh, huge base of, of people going into that space and I can tell you this is a very good alternative to India, Russia, whatever else you try. So those 901 we reach them now. So with this blockchain we will really ensure that those mothers are kept alive, those grandparents are kept alive so that the kids can interact with them their whole life. Yeah. We need to look into the future, and this future is not so, it's like mid-term, yeah? it's, it's not only in 20 years. This, this will be really crucial in the next few years already. So i tell you about the status in the end. The proof of concept is ready, as I said, prototype, gone through MIT business. We see a lot of hurdles at the moment which is normal if you disrupt the system, because this is disruptive. Yeah? The blood donation is in the hands of countries, of big organizations, and they want to keep it. Yeah? They don't want to empower the people. They, they are afraid that it will change, but it has to change. Somehow we have to change it, and blockchain is one of the variants to do it. So what do we need? strong partners, but also partners which are not afraid to disrupt the system, to go against it. And then we could go also with healthcare, pharma, Johnson & Johnson was here, for example, to validate the whole thing and to go on. So I hope you realize that this is a important topic which will soon come to us. We have one solution. I don't say we are the only one, but I think we are quite at the at a good moment of the project where it only needs to be accelerated in a very good way and by good partners. Thank you. Questions?
Question. What have you learned from the MIT review for your project? What, what do I, tell me more about the experience. The experience was first that it was accepted as a, as a program was already a confirmation that we're doing something which makes sense. Then the whole concept we presented there was validated without major problems. We, we just took, took one by one without being, uh, having big technological issues or so. The only issues really are these hurdles I, I talk now about. This is a totally different topic which has nothing to do unfortunately with technology. Yeah. It's about the mindset of people in this space. Ah, the back, in the back. Thank you. Does your solution deal with the blood components in terms of whole blood versus plasma versus red cell versus XYZ? How does your system striate in that regard? Um, there are plans to go that far as well. But, you know, we put now the efforts in, in having this proof of concept for this afterwards to add such layers is not the thing which is a problem. I mean, we already thought about it, but it's nothing which which will kill the issue. But does the, but, but does, but does the patient know or understand that? I mean, isn't there a whole issue of if you're opening it up to the community, how does the community understand what is available from a clinical perspective, of what is appropriateness from the clinical aspect as well as the quality of the components. How do they, how do they know that? Yes, you know, <laughs> of course you can make it very complicated and then you're right, then uh, people will say, but oh, I'm afraid uh, of it. That's why this is not at the moment the topic we, we're going. Yeah? For professionals, it will be a big topic for hospitals. For And we can also imagine to have uh, different layers on the network where you see different information about the same thing. But some information you need as a professional and others you don't need as as an individual. You just want to do something good or receive something good. Not to belabor the point. The, the issue is how do you get the pa you, the issue is trying to get the patient involved in their care. And at least that's where a lot of healthcare is going in, in certain parts of the world. So if, you, if you're really focusing on getting the patient involved in the care, don't you think the patient needs to know what is the appropriate cl clinical application for what they may need in their blood uh, utilization? Of course, I mean, this is about transparency. You, you can't do such a thing without transparency, They're impossible. And that's why also blockchain is used for this. This is the beauty of it. Yes, totally, I agree with you. All good? So thank you very much again.